Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and I'll be taking a look at this Corsair Gaming Strafe RGB mechanical keyboard featuring the Cherry MX silent switches. It's also available in the Cherry MX red, brown, and blue variants. Here's what comes in the box. You get a quick start guide, of course. I always leaf through these just in case. This is the warranty guide and there's even a warranty notification for Aussies. In this vacuum sealed pack are extra WASD and FPS MOBA keycap sets. These gray topped keys are textured and contoured, so you'll be able to recognize them in the dark. There's also a keycap puller tossed in there. Last but certainly not least is the soft touch wrist rest with grippy triangular patterns. On the other end are rubber feet to keep this piece in place on a smooth surface. Use these two hooks here to attach this rest to the keyboard. All you need to do is gently snap the hooks into the provided grooves on the bottom of this board. Also on the bottom are grippy feet and angled feet if that's what you prefer. Now let's take a look at the cable. You get thick rubber cabling with two USB connectors. The one with the keyboard icon is meant for power. Plug this into a USB 3.0 port. The other connector is for the pass-through port on the top edge of this keyboard. You can use this to plug in a mouse or headset or other compatible devices. Here's a closer look at the keyboard. It measures 448 millimeters by 170 millimeters by 40 millimeters, and it weighs 1.35 kilograms. I like the matte finish look on this board, and the keycaps aren't glossy either. Nice. It's mostly in black with a white backplate that helps enhance the lighting, and white glossy sides which give it a sharp look. This keyboard has 100% anti-ghosting with full key rollover on USB. As for the keys, the spacebar stands out from the rest because it's textured. You get a single Windows key on this side and a function key on the other. The function plus F key commands goes as follows. F5, F7, and F8 will give you the volume control, which is a must have on any keyboard. F9 to F12 are the other multimedia keys like play, pause. On the right corner, we have the num lock, caps lock, and scroll lock indicators. And next to that is the LED brightness adjust button. You get three levels of brightness as well as the off function. For those who require a Windows lock button, one is provided. A red light oddly means Windows is not locked, and a blue light means it is. I've removed some keycaps so I can show you what the switches look like. These are cherry switches that are orange or peach in color, and they're linear like reds, but after typing on this keyboard, I've noticed a quicker actuation to my key presses. If that's your jam, then you'll be happy. I personally prefer to bottom out my keys as it has a more satisfying conclusion. Here's a quick sound test of the switches. I'd say they're definitely softer and duller in sound than the MX Reds. We are back again in the Corsair Utility Engine software. Click New to create a profile. Of course, you can import and export profiles as well. And here's an option to sync lighting effects to other compatible devices like a mouse or headset. Use this drag down menu to access your other created profiles. Click on this icon to edit or delete a profile, and you can also save profile to device memory. Below profile is mode. This is where you can add profiles within a profile. For example, under the JTL profile, I'd have a different key layout for Audition and Premiere. Or for WoW, I'd have a separate key map for each character. Click the plus icon to add a mode. And just like how you would edit a profile, click on this menu to access the mode options. On to assignments. Right click on any key to assign a new action or set the key to mode or profile selection switching. Let's head into assign a new action. This is where you can create and assign macros, text, keystrokes, and the like to specific keys. I like that there's a lot of choices that aid in creating complex macros like double macros, lighting effects, and more. I shall call this new macro test. Click record, type out the command, and click stop. After you click OK, you'll see the new macro assigned to the key of your choice. You can also create new actions in the Actions tab. Right click on an action to get to a menu if you wish to edit or delete the action. Another thing you can do is open up the Actions list and then drag and drop an existing action onto your key of choice. Next up is the Lighting tab. In Standard Settings, you can highlight a group of keys and right click to assign new lighting. For some reason, only solid and gradient lighting patterns are available to you. However, if you right click the highlighted patch and add to group, new group, then name it, click OK, then try assign new lighting again, ripple and wave will no longer be grayed out. Let's create a ripple effect and I must name it or it won't save. Right click to add lighting tabs, you can create a lot if you wish. Drag the tabs around to play with intensity. Right click on a tab to edit for color, you can have a different color at each intensity level. I went with JTL colors, of course. Other fancy options include adjustments for tail, velocity, and the like. I prefer to start the effect on key press. Here's what this effect looks like. Pretty snazzy, eh? 
You can also click on a group and select a background color, either from the pre-existing palette or choose something more complicated from this color wheel. This background color is in addition to whatever lighting effects you assign to different groups. Just like Actions, you can create new lighting effects under this tab and have access to those effects under the Effects list. If you're looking for preset lighting effects, click from Standard Settings to Advanced Settings. Set a background color if you wish, but it won't always be apparent because some effects are overpowering. Just highlight the group you wish to have a background color for and select a color. I don't see the option to add groups, but you can always highlight another group and assign another background color. And highlight, then right click to clear the background effect. Let's go through the assortment of lighting effects. Spiral Rainbow is by far the trippiest. I can't handle it in fast mode, but this would be a hit at a party. Click on the pencil icon to change up the speed or direction of the color flow. Here's what it looks like on slow. Much better, right? Next up is Rainbow Wave, but I'm sure you've all seen this one before. Here's a look at the speed and direction section. I like that you can set this vertically or horizontally. Visor just goes back and forth, kind of like a police siren, to me anyway. And you can see the background colors more clearly with this effect. You can toggle the colors from random to alternating as well as the speed. I have always adored the rain effect since its inception. It's soothing and not obnoxious. Like Visor, you can change the colors from random to alternating with two colors of your choice. Color shift is something I like to see in fast mode. Let's color shift between JTL colors. Isn't that just marvelous? But I'm sure it's too much pink and purple for some people. Here's a look at color pulse. Once again, I prefer this mode on fast and I'll keep it on random this time. What do you think? Does this one strike your fancy? Time for color wave and ooh, more options. You can change the colors, speed, and direction. Let's keep it on random and change it to fast. I like how the up direction looks, like life always moving on the up and up. Keep that positive attitude going. Type lighting key is what I normally use because unless I'm showing off, I prefer more subtle color and lighting arrangements. The color and duration can be changed for this effect. Let's make the duration short. I like keeping this one on random because who doesn't like rainbows? Finally, we have type lighting ripple. I'm sure you can guess what this does. Let's make this speedy and random like me. This is definitely a fun effect to play with. And if you're typing regularly with this keyboard, it'll look like a constant burst of rainbows. I want candy now. The void effects require a headset for both playback and microphone. Okay, we're done with lighting. Here's a quick look at the performance tab. And finally, we have settings. You can change the keyboard layout and polling rate under device. Make sure to keep the firmware updated. Here are the general and OSD settings in program. And finally, we have support, both online and technical. That's all folks. That wraps it up for this look at the Corsair Gaming Strafe RGB Mechanical Keyboard featuring the Cherry MX Silent Switches. I'm Joanne, and if you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Joanne Tech Lover Facebook, Joanne Tech Lover again on Twitter, and Joanne Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Also, be sure to follow me on my other YouTube channels, JTL Lifestyle, JTL Cuteness Overload, and JTL Love Life and Advice. I guess all that's left to say is bye!